It's time for another episode of the wildly popular podcast, Chasing Meeples. Hey there, Meeple Chasers! Guess what? Today, Chris and Angie have handed over the keys to the show, and I'm in the driver's seat. And oh boy, have I got a treat for you? We're diving headfirst into the treasure trove of Meeple quizzes. Newbies, you're about to get a turbocharged introduction to what makes Chasing Meeples so awesome. And for our diehard fans, it's a high-octane trip down memory lane. No more waiting, no more delay. Let's rock it into the chase and fire up those quizzes now. All right, Chris, are you ready? Am I ready for what? This is a Chasing Meeple Quiz Show. Oh, Chasing Meeple Quiz Show. Ooh, that we, yeah. we, have a, we have a quiz show now. We do. We have, a, we have a quiz show. And just so you know <laughs> that these questions are going to um, have to do with our name. And then it's going to morph into board games. So there's a theme. There's a theme, just so you know that. I have no idea what her, what this quiz is about. All I see in the show notes is Quiz Chicago. Unlike Board Game 101 about what is a meeple, I have no screen or internet that I can click off of like Angie did when she was on the, <laughs> on the interweb. The <laughs> interweb, yeah. Are you ready? In 1991, the rock band Chicago recorded a song with the following lyric. No use making you care about me. No way that I'm going to win. Oh, darling, I might as well be. Can you finish the sentence? Am I allowed to ask questions? Absolutely. Okay. 1991. And it's a new song? What's the song from 1991? Well, okay, was uh, that was a stupid question. So in the 90s, Peter Cetera was no longer the lead singer of Chicago. Oh, you got me there. <laughs> which means, who cares? I have no idea what this song is, but read that again. No use making you care about me. No way that I'm going to win. Oh, darling, I might as well be... Playing Catan. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, this, oh, this has words. something to do with the name of our podcast. Oh, oh. and then leading into <laughs> games. <laughs> as well, be playing. I should have lis- listened to that part where you were explaining what it's about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, you, you're, I can understand you until you start to speak about <laughs> <laughs> this. <laughs> I can understand you until you listen. Oh. Well, you said... Chris, this is Chasing Meeple's Quiz Show. Oh. Yeah, and then I was panicking. I may as well be chasing... Next question, you have to kind of get that word to get to the next question. Okay, chasing your pawn. Okay, yeah. We own one game with the word wind in the title. Oh, darling, I might as well be chasing the wind. The wind? The wind. 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 And we have a game with wind in the title? Yes. What is that game? Oh, my goodness. Okay. It is... No, no, no. No hints. Okay. No hints. You don't give hints. The, after the colon. Does, does like, does, like, Alex Trebek be like, this word <laughs> comes after the colon. And then somebody is, <laughs> somebody's like, what is... Well, here's a hint. No, no. You got to wait for the answer. Oh, Winds of Gale, Chris? What's the first word? It's the name of the game. I know. Paolo Mori and Stonemaier Games. Yes. Libertalia. Yeah. Okay. One reviewer commented. This is his comment on the game. Pure abstract chaos. I didn't understand this concept at all. While another reviewer left the comment, the game is fun exclamation point. The art is great, exclamation point. I know this is a sticking point with a lot of people, but this is a silly game. I don't mind if the armor of the ship is a gorilla. What is the game rated? Yeah, it has nothing to do with that, but I thought those were funny. What is the game rated on BGG? Yes, what is it rated on BGG? <laughs> Eight. Oh, that's pretty good. I think we can give you half a point for that. It's 7.6. Oh, okay. I mean, rounding up, that would be eight. Yeah. Okay, Libertalia, Winds of Galecrest, is a re-implementation. What year was the original Libertalia published? 
I don't know. 1999. Not quite that old. It's 2012. Well, I just figured maybe you're trying to be... Oh, no. 91 was that non-Peter Cetera song. Oh, my gosh. That would have been good. <gasps> Ooh, I'm not that clever. <laughs> <laughs> the original game is rated 495. Is Libertalia yeah. Winds of Gale Crest ranked higher or lower? It's rated lower. Yes, 808. There's a lot of people that love that original. So that's it? So that's it. Good? You did. What's my score? Two out of five. I got two out of five, right? Two out of five. I feel like I got more than that. The right. score in BGG, you said eight, and it was a 7.6. So if we give you a half point for each one, we can give you a three out of five. And I'm writing this down, three out of five. Are you ready? Are you ready for a quiz? Get your thinking cap on. Oh, I am ready. I am ready. I'm actually starting to like this quiz thing. Well, this is a pretty simple one. You know what? It's only four questions. I was three, and I turned it into four. Okay. So, you know you know what I love about this quiz stuff the most? Is that I know nothing about what she's going to quiz me. Like, for real. Oh, she will I saw not, you peeking. Only because you put it with my notes. You put your notes on top of my quiz. Well, your, your security laxed, I guess. I did. I did. I was so worried about... Ah, everything else. Okay. This is pop culture trivia. Once again, Chris, our subject starts out with something to do with our name, that is Chasey Meeples, and ends with a board game. Okay. I'm starting to get the hang of it. It's Alrighty. Only- In 1997, rom-com written and directed by Kevin Smith. Stars. Do you know what a rom com is? Yeah, romantic comedy. Yes. So it's 1997. Think back. I don't back. know why you said it's so weird, though. I don't know. Because I, I actually have it here on my sheet. I have rom with a capital R. <laughs> and I see. So if I'm speaking it like this, I actually think for some reason it would say rom com, okay. which is not necessary. <laughs> okay. And then 1997 romantic comedy written and directed by Kevin Smith stars Ben Affleck. Joey Lauren Adams and Jason Lee. Who the hell's Joey Lauren Adams? It's a girl. Oh, okay. I'm thinking Joey Lawrence. I, did, I didn't want to like not include her. Oh, okay. Anyway, but it's a girl. Okay, so it, 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 <laughs> 1997 romantic comedy that's written directed by Kevin Smith. It stars Ben Affleck, Jason Lee, and Joey Lauren Adams. This is called Chasing Who? Okay. What year was that? 1997. Chasing... I don't know who this Lauren Adam Smith is. Well, it's a girl. So now you have to be chasing something. Someone. Chasing... Yeah. Chasing Mary. Oh! Chasing... No, that's something about Mary. Hold on. Chasing Amy. Darn you. Darn you. That's it. Was it Chasing Amy? Chasing Amy. I pulled that out of my butt. (laughs) You pull a lot of things out of your butt. Hey, hey, now. Ho, ho. (sighs) I didn't think you were going to get that one. In the 1994 movie Clerks, Kevin Smith starred as what character? Silent Bob. I'm really going to have to dig deep to get the more <laughs> difficult questions than this. Because th- those were the difficult ones. Really? Because after this, this is pretty simple. Well, Chasing Amy, I guessed mm-hmm. on. And I've never seen Clerks in my life, but I know it's like Silent Bob and something J. In 2014, a special edition of a popular game was created called Silent Bob and J Strikes Back Edition. What is the game? Okay, hold on. Give me some time to think about this. No problem. We're what, not, I'm not going anywhere. What year? 2014. It's a game that has special editions. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a lot of games that have special editions. It's silly. Like Monopoly. It's, I'm sure it's not Monopoly, but... It's like Scooby-Doo Jenga. Yeah. I don't know. Um... Uno. <laughs> it's Monopoly. Is it Monopoly? Yes. 
Oh, well, Monopoly's got everything. See, that was the given. Oh, yeah, that was the given. That was the given. That was the given. That was that's the, the one given. I thought. For... The one that, yeah. No, that's the one I actually just created. So this quiz would have four questions instead of three. Okay, so I'm so far, I have two, two. and I missed one. I don't want Monopoly. I, I got that one wrong. I know, that's one you got wrong. I said Uno. Yeah. So you have two right and one wrong. And well played with the poker face when I said there's probably something like Monopoly. Thank you. Um, And what is it rated on BGG? Oh, God, I hate that you do this. 175,936. Not what it's ranked. Oh, ranked. Rated. What's it rated? Two. Two. It's not that bad. It's a 6.5. It's, it's oh, okay. It's good. good. What made it different? I have no idea. That's as far as I got. <laughs> oh, okay. So it, I don't my... think it makes it any different. I think instead of Park Place, it's probably like the Smoke Shack or something like that. <laughs> I never, I didn't look at it. Oh, okay. Way to do your research. Well, I didn't care. I just needed to get from <laughs> chasing to a board game. Oh, okay. And that's the way I got it through Kevin Smith. Oh, how about this? I got another question. Bonus question. Kevin Smith owns a... It's a comic book store. Forget it. Okay. So how'd I do? How'd I do? Um, you got three. No, you got two. Is the bonus question a real bonus question? Then I got three. No, you got two. You got eight chasing Amy. You got silent Bob. Well, yeah, I threw it in there. So you got those two? Yeah, okay. Three. You got three out of five. I'll take it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. All right, everybody. It is quiz time. Woohoo. Are you ready for this, Chris? I'm always ready for quiz. This was difficult for me because I had an idea. I really had this idea of what I wanted to do, and it turned out to be a little bit more difficult, so I finagled the questions, I believe. At first, I was really worried that they were going to be too difficult, but then after last week of the way you did last week, then I thought, hmm, I ain't worried about it. (laughs) I ain't worried about it. I don't care how hard they are. You mean how I... Got you so frustrated because I had the answers to every one of your quiz questions? Yes. And no, you didn't so have them all. So fr- oh, 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 okay, no, so didn't have them all. I missed one. Or two. Santa versus You know what? It's going to start today. I'm going to start keeping track. So last week doesn't even count. Oh, no, no, no. They all count. Well, let's start with this one in 2004. We're back to a romantic comedy starring pop icon Mandy Moore. Played Anna Foster, the president's daughter. They go on a trip to Prague. Anna is upset with her overprotective father because he broke a promise. So she decides to give her security detail the slip during a concert and runs off with a handsome young man. Unbeknownst to her, he is a Secret Service agent assigned to protect her. That's so stupid. Anyway. It's a 2004 romantic comedy. Yeah, okay. The movie... The movie is called Chasing... I tried to give you enough build-up so you could kind of get an idea why this... Chasing the president's daughter. No? Is that your answer? Yeah, why not? Okay, you're wrong. It's Chasing Liberty. Oh, well, you know how the Secret Service always give everybody a nickname? Yeah. Her, her nickname was Liberty. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. So they had to chase her around. Wow. Okay. Like a, how many awards did that win? I don't know. None. I don't know. None. All right. We're going back to 2001. Hmm. A movie, Mandy Moore. She played Lana Thomas. I don't even know who Mandy Moore is. You don't know who the pop icon Mandy The Pop. She was a pop icon. Icon Mandy Moore. She was Moore. one of those little. Tell me one song. I don't know. Okay. Um, all right. She was she's iconic. like one of those sweet. So iconic. Friend, or not in this movie, though. She was so iconic. I don't she even was know iconic. a song. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Keep going. 
In this 2001 movie, she played the mean girl arch nemesis to Mia Thermopolis, who was played by Anne Hathaway. Anne Hathaway in this movie discovers that she is a princess. What is the name of this movie? Hey, everybody, I just discovered I'm a princess. No, it's called Princess Diaries. Oh, geez. All right. This is where it's going to, well, okay. Well, this is where it's going to get. Yeah, that's good. This that's is where good. it's going to get good. Okay. okay, can't wait. In 2004, Princess Diaries 2. Jeez. The- <laughs> <laughs> In 2004, The Princess Diaries 2 Royal Engagement, Princess Mia is setting into her new life in Genovia. But she soon discovers that she has to marry within 30 days so she can become queen. Mm, of, of, of Genovia. Yes. Yeah. A young Lord Nicholas Devereux is the royal suitor trying to win her heart and hand. Who is the actor that plays Nicholas Devereaux? <laughs> what year is I this? don't feel bad for no, you no. not getting these questions. I don't care. 2004. 2004. Uh, 2004. It's going to be um, Zac Efron. No, but that's a good guess. Okay. Chris Pine. Oh, he's kind of cool. Okay. Next question. We'll put a big fat zero by this one. Chris Pine stars as a young, brash starship captain Mm -hmm. in this sci-fi movie based on a television series of the same name. What is the movie? That's Star Trek. All right. There's plenty of Star Trek games. We know that. Mm -hmm. Star Trek. Starship Tactical Combat Simulation is the oldest game on the list. On BGG. BGG. So when you search Star Trek, Mm -hmm. the list that comes up, that is the oldest game. What year did it come out? I'm going to say 1969. Okay, the game is not that old. Hmm. It's 1983. No, well, okay, fine. I I went back. I mean, I was like back, going back down. Okay. In 2012... A special Star Trek edition of a popular hobby board game was released. What is it? Farkle. (laughs) Is that your answer? Sure. You're not even going to think about this one? It's Catan. Okay, so you are willing to take a zero at that? Just to be some sort of smarty pants. Yeah. Yeah. What is that? Was I right, though? Yes, you're right. Okay, good. You're right. All right. Star Trek Catan is ranked 1,270 on BGG. Mm-hmm. Star Trek The Dice Game. Is it higher or lower than 1,270? Higher. Lower. It's 5,269. Okay. Is Star Trek the deck building game higher or lower? Lower. It's higher. It's 3157. No, 3757. See, Star Trek has got all these different kinds of games. They got deck building. They got the dice game. They have the board game. They have a Catan game. But if you were going to make a Star Trek game, what type of game would it be? And describe it. This is going to be open. If I really like your answer, it'll be worth a lot. I could see no thought being put into this whatsoever. Really? Yeah, really. Okay, so if I were to make a Star Trek game. You're going to make a Star Trek game. It would be a game where not only do you travel through space, you go on to planets and you. Well, you're really not a game designer, are you? No, okay. (laughs) You got to set it up. No, what kind of game would you make if, what kind of stuff? Oh, you want a boring answer like mechanisms? Okay. Yeah. It would be a game. It would would be a worker placement game. 
Well, that's a better answer. It would be a Euro style worker placement game that also has pick up and deliver elements. And what would you pick up and deliver? What would I pick up and deliver? Good question. I would pick up people that are in distress. So you could do missions and you would take them, the people, and you could do a mechanism in there where. Would it be a campaign game? It could be. It would there be. be elements of a roll and write game? It could be. It could be. So, like, my thought would be is you could do worker placement and you could do missions. Okay. So, like, you rescue somebody. So let's say, and you'd have a certain amount of rounds to do it. So the people on, like, let's say there were six people on this spaceship. For every round that you don't defeat the enemy, let's say, a la Dice Throne Battle, right? You change the face of the die from a six to a five. Now there's one person dead. Four, three, two. Well, there you go. And, yep. There you go. I'm going to give you six points for that. Okay. So you have a little slow start to it, but I, I see the wheels were turning after a while, and I appreciate that. And if there are any game designers out there that are willing to help me flesh that out, contact us at chasingmeeples at yahoo.com. I would be more than happy to help finish that game. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> All right. You ended up with... I think eight points on that. I think you ended up with eight points on that. Eight points, that's not bad. Not bad. All right, I'll take it. Hey, Meeple Chasers. Hope you're loving today's nostalgic roller coaster of quizzes as much as I am. Now, I've got a small favor to ask. If you enjoy this show and all the fun antics we bring, please hit that like and subscribe button. It goes a long way in supporting what we do here. And speaking of support, we've got some awesome stuff over on our Etsy store, Chasing Meeples Go. Also, there's a support the show button on our website. That's chasingmeeples.buzzsprout.com. Or even easier, just click on the link right in the show notes. Every bit of support truly means the world to us. It keeps the quizzes, the banter, and the show going. So from the bottom of our hearts, thank you. Now let's dive back into the show. We done? We're done. All right. No, we're not. We have a couple's quiz. I know we do. I mean, are we done with that? Oh, okay. Quiz time. And today, it's a special quiz. Ah, <laughs> they're all is, Oh, they are. But this is the famous couples quiz challenge that's been going around. So I have compiled, what, 10 questions here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, I think 11. It's 10. You have 11. I have 11? Okay, I hope I have 11 answers. So I'm just like in the... It's not the dating game. Newlywed game. The newlywed game. The newlywed game. I'm going to give, or Chris is going to tell me how he thinks my answer would be. So I'm going to say, favorite game designer. Chris, what do you think my favorite game designer is? And we have our answers written on cards, and I'm going to show, and she's going to show me her answer, and then I'm going to show her my answer. Just like she said, the newlywed game. So we literally use your imagination and picture us holding cards up. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So the first question, Angie, was. What is my favorite game designer? Angie, your favorite game designer is Bruno Catalia. Is that correct? That is correct. That is correct. I think I'm a little bit more transparent than you are. You think so? I am. So I think I think this one's going to be yours. And I actually did bring a scorecard, but I, I seem to have lost my red pen. I seem to have taken it from Ooh. you. <laughs> Why did you do that? <laughs> okay. One for Chris. All right. Sorry. It's all right. Okay. Chris, I think your favorite designer is Stan Kordonsky. Negative. Oh, it is. I don't really have to. I don't really have a favorite designer. Oh, you at the moment. You use the red pen. To... <laughs> however, 
to a if I were... Ignacy or Phil Walker party. <laughs> so I, I mean, I like, I like Stan Kordonsky stuff, but Ignacy, uh, the game that really, I mean, he's got, um, God, I can't even think of the name of the game now. 51st, 51st State is one of your faves. 51st yeah. State, honey. Oh my gosh. One of my favorite games of all time. Robinson Caruso, as punishing as it is, ranks right up there too. Yeah, Predator Porter is a good game. I mean, I haven't played an Ignacy game that I haven't liked, right? Yeah. And Phil Walker Harding. Yeah, he hits it out of the park too. Right? Really, I like him. He's really, he does something that I think Bruno does well, and it's rule books. Yes. Yes, I'll give that to Bruno. Rule books. I'll yeah, give if that you to can, Bruno. If you can describe an abstract game in three page rule book. <laughs> You're good. You're good, yeah. All right, question number two, Angie. What is my favorite two-player game? You know, I never even thought of that. Huh. Targi. Splendor Duel. Oh, and you know who designed Splendor Duel? Bruno Cathal. Yes, he did. Splendor Duel actually did take Targi's spot. Oh, did it? It did. It did. This is my current hotness when it comes to two-player games. Splendor Duel. Okay. So I am... So now... I'm zero for two. Now my guess mm-hmm. for your favorite two-player game... Yes. ...is going to be Botnik. Splendor Duel. Ooh. <laughs> All right. So... One I so far, if people are keeping track, I am I have one point. Angie has zero. Yep. Question number three. Our favorite dice throne character to play. Angie, what is my favorite dice throne character to play? Seraph. It is Seraph. You are correct. That was almost like your gimme. I know. Well. I think they're pretty much all gimme. Okay, so what is my favorite? Cursed Pirate. You got it. <laughs> you got it. Cursed Pirate. She rocks. All right. The next question is, what is my favorite party game? Strike. You are correct. Strike. We don't play many party games, so it was... It was narrowed it down to a lot or narrowed it down to a little. Yeah. Just a few. Angie, I think your favorite party game is just one. It (laughs) is. All right. This is going to be a good one. This is going to be a good one. So what is the board gaming pet feet peeve that you have about me? Wait, no. You have to guess what... I have to guess what your board gaming pet peeve is. About you. Yes. When I'm on the phone while we play. No. No. Sometimes you sulk when you're not winning. (laughs) (laughs) Baloney. I don't sulk. Yeah, I do. That's true. Hmm. I think your pet peeve. <laughs> hold on a second. Oh. Just hold on a second. I sulk. You, I, you do. You may you try like, to. You mean like last night when I was like, oh, you took that meeple? No, no. You just get very quiet. Oh, I, and yeah. Kind of like. Do I mope? Yeah, you, you get, get mopey. mopey. Yeah. You get mopey. Yeah, you get part of you like, what? what? <laughs> I won? <laughs> It's like you were like prepared to start sulking because <laughs> you're like, what game did we play that you thought for sure that you won and then you lost? Oh, oh. God. How many of them? No, it was just like last week. There was something you were sure. Maybe it was the first time we played Wayfarers. I don't know. You thought for sure that you won and then you had lost. So you got kind of, kind of mopey. It's like every Euro game we play. I totally think I mm-hmm. won. And then here comes Angie at the end. All right. Anyway, so what is my pet peeve about you? AP. No. You never tell me when your turn is over. That was like you last night. No. 
You last night were not telling me when you were done. How many times do I have to say, is it my turn? I did that last night. Well, for the first time ever, because I was on the phone writing a review for the game. All by myself. with Nobody else writing it for me. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't doing it going, Google? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. Angie <laughs> said I had to have this done by tonight <laughs> and I haven't started. <laughs> All right. Angie, what is my favorite player color? Green. Correct. I, you know, I shouldn't have given you that crayon. I can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> What's my favorite color? Purple. Yay. Yay. See, those were the give me's. Okay, so this one I just randomly picked an answer. Okay. So, Angie, what is my favorite snack to eat while we play board games? Water with Mio in it. <laughs> Doritos. <laughs> I was going to say poor man's nachos. <laughs> poor man's nachos. Yes, that is that is it right there. I didn't want to write that down. Oh. But yes, sorry. poor man's nachos. Literally taking Doritos. <laughs> and throwing shredded cheese Putting on. shredded cheese on it and putting it in the microwave. And it gets really sticky in the bowl and you can't scrub it out. Yes. So what is mine? Dr. Pepper. Zero. <laughs> it uh, Still f- Dr. Pepper. Zero. Still Dr. Pepper. I'm taking that one. You give me. Oh, that I point. forgot to do uh, player colors. So we got that one, and then you get that one. Okay. All Just right. Leave the there. Okay. Hang on to the pen. All right. All right, Angie. Chris, what is my favorite board game accessory? Oh, I got mine messed up. Um, that's okay. You're asking me your favorite board game accessory, metal coins. Yes. Correct. Angie, your favorite board game accessory is a score pad, <laughs> no, <laughs> a player's aid. <laughs> that's not an accessory. Okay. Okay. It's a dice tower. Bit bowls. Bit bowls. I should have known that. Bit bowls. Can't get through life without bit bowls. Mm. Okay. All right. Angie, what is my least favorite theme? Oh my gosh. Egypt. Quilting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Rosenberg. <laughs> Your least favorite theme is space. Yeah. You got it. Well, I don't think that's a theme. That's a theme. That's a th- I'm calling well, it a theme. Okay. Well, I suppose there's Calico and there's Patrick, so I guess it can be a theme. Home Eck. That's a theme. <laughs> All right. What is my least favorite mechanism? Dice rolling. Area control. Oh, I should have known that. Area control. Hmm. I'm surprised you missed that one. Hmm. I'm surprised I missed that one too. Your least favorite Angie, what is my least favorite theme? I know. I'm actually thinking. Let me, wait, wait. This is the thinking pose. I'm going to say area control. Nope. It's card drafting. Really? Mm hmm. Huh. I don't like games where you got to pass cards around the table and okay. all that stuff. When it's just two players, not that cool. Might be better if you had more than one player. Yeah. So. There are more than two players. All right, Angie. All right. I'm going to ask you a question now. This mm-hmm. is the last question mm-hmm. of the couple's challenge. Mm-hmm. What? So neither one of us got that one. Correct. Okay. What is my least favorite game? Discover Lands Unknown. 
Oh God, I should have put that down. This is what I get for writing this answer out when I'm sleeping, half asleep. Patchwork. Oh, that, yeah, like, that's just true. Those two games, yikes, Aroni. Yeah. Discover yeah. Lands Unknown kills you if your socks are wet and patchwork. Hey, let's play this really nice game about quilting. It's so beautiful. You get to collect buttons. You get to do this and that. Let's add up our score. Negative 56. <laughs> what? <laughs> it just crushes your soul. And it doesn't even, like, you can't even warm up with the quilt that you made. <laughs> You're just... It's got holes in it. That's why you have negative points. <laughs> just cold and beaten down. All right. So, Angie, I think you're... <laughs> I know this answer. Angie, I think your least favorite game is one that you would consider a waste of time. 3,000 Scoundrels. <laughs> no, it's 3,000. <laughs> Your card says 2,000. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> no. I just realized that after you said that, I'm like, oh. <laughs> yes, you wrote 2,000 on your card. Yeah. I'm still right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, who is the winner of the board game couples challenge angie tell me who won who knows each other who knows who knows how am i how do, how do i put that how do i put that who won who who won yeah okay. that's the best. who won and who's gonna sulk you're gonna sulk you won six to five ah, yeah, yeah. i am the winner that's just because you were <laughs> you didn't know how to answer questions at eleven at night. <laughs> yes, yes, that's what it is. That's what it is. It's not the fact. Yeah, that. you you didn't answer your correctly about yourself correctly. Okay, well, pressure. Answer yourself correctly about yourself. <laughs> you don't know yourself as well as you think you do. Oh, Ooh, there Ooh, you go. That's deep. Mm. Mm. So anyway, I win six you to win. five. I'll take it. <laughs> are you are you ready? Put your thinking cap on. It is quiz time. All right. Cue the music. This is rule replacement. Now, I was going to do an example, but I didn't. So I'm going to read a rule. That rule is going to have keywords replaced with terms of springtime gardening or flowers as in move one tulip that would be move one cube that's an example okay, i'm following yes okay so you have to come up with the game so you don't have to come up with the actual rule just the name of the game that it came from okay okay max points Max points. Let's do five okay. each one. So then it would be 25 points. All right. Because it follows the theme. So you know what our theme is today? Resurgence. Apocalypse. 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 I like that theme. Okay. So the first rule is weed pickers or weed a picker. Here it is. Remove one picker cube from the garden you are in, placing it in the plant supply next to the board. If this picker color has been plucked, remove all cubes of that color from the garden you are in. And I, I made this easier because it was more difficult. Yeah, because this is really easy right now. I'm taking out, like, when you when you read that to me, I'm trying to, like, remove picker, plucker. Picker. Garden, plant. So the key words are. No, no, you don't. Oh, don't. Okay. Oh, no. The game is pandemic. I have pandemic legacy, but I will accept pandemic. Okay. Next question. Ah, that was tough. Hmm. 
Next one, I'm calling planting a lily. <laughs> what did you call the other one? Weed a pickers. So it was treat a disease. Weed a weed a pickers? Yeah. Treat a disease was the name of the rule. And you changed it to weed a pickers? Yeah. Okay. So I'm changing the word treat and then disease to weed a pickers. Yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> okay. Okay, I won't read what I'm titled. Yeah, don't don't do that. That's going to throw me okay. completely okay. off. Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. I thought they were clever, but okay. Well, they're clever, but treat it as ease. We to pick us. We, so I'm moving the word treat and adding the word weed. And then removing the word disease and adding the word pickers. I, yes, I understand that. I thought it was clever. Okay. <laughs> the next one, Chris, the next one. On your turn, you take one of your available lilies and place them in a space in your garden. You cannot place a lily on a space that already contains a lily, nor a space from one of the petals in the room trap. I don't even want to ask this. What did you name this rule? Planting a lily. So you changed the word placing with planting Mm -hmm. and a lily is a worker. Close. Close. But yeah, essentially. The word isn't worker. I'm, I'm, I'm lost. I'll read you the rule. Mm -hmm. Placing a dweller. On your turn, you take one of your available dwellers and place them on a space in the vault. Oh. Not place. Yeah. Okay. This one. Yeah. Fallout shelter. Yeah. Okay. The next one. This one you better get. <laughs> oh, great. This one, you, because this is the one that started off in my head. Spend one rose petal to take your rose thorn into your hand. The rose thorn may be junked to gain an extra rose petal. When you junk the rose thorn, return it to your play area instead of pruning it. You may keep the rose thorn in your hand across multiple pansies. Well, this is 50 for a state. No? Because you're junking a card. Is it Radlands? The water. Take it's a water, water style. It's the water. Style. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, water okay. style. Okay. The next one. Because in Radlands, you do the same thing. You can, or in, in 50 for a state, you do the same thing. You can, like, I think, I don't know. Yeah, you can get rid of cards. And get it for the resources instead uh-huh. of using it as a card. So that's the way I heard that. Okay. There are two ways you can fertilize a location in your garden. Lilac. Choose a card from your glove and discard a number of petals equal to its pollen value. Put the card in front of you, then smile and say something nice to your opponents. That's you. New flower bed cards are placed next to your daisy board according to their category. Petunia locations are built in the top row. Geranium locations are built in the middle row. And mum locations are built in the bottom row. 50 first state. That's 50 first state. Got it. Build a location. Yep. Last one. Multiple tulip cards may be planted at the same time. Your first tulip will be your bouquet, who represents the leader of your garden. You'll be able to gain new tulip cards by placing your token into a dandelion or iris room with the pick a tulip icon and paying the associated resource cost. You can also gain a tulip for free when you complete a row of three seedlings for the first time. Remember, when you gain a tulip card, you immediately add the corresponding flower token from your supply into your greenhouse. However, if you do not have any more tokens left in your supply, you may still prune that card, skipping the planting the token in your greenhouse. 
I have absolutely no, uh, I'm going to say just because I know how your mind works. It's endless winter because Stan Kordonsky is the designer of resurgence. Am I correct? Stan Kordonsky is the designer of resurgence and also that game. Step three, worker actions. Multiple survivor cards may be activated at the same time. Your first survivor card will be your hero. Oh, see, represents and I the totally of thought, faction. okay, I didn't want to go with resurgence and in the meeple quiz, but come on, Angie. What? Dirty. <laughs> Doing me a dirty. Are you serious? I, I thought it would have been too obvious. I for thought me to that say was that. a gimme. Well, I was going to say that. Oh, 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 so bad. I'm so bad. Oh, well, Angie, I just want to say that was a very good quiz. However, please explain to me how the gardening and springtime ties into the theme of They apocalypse. don't, but okay. I Because that's what's throwing me off. Okay. I'll tell you what. I got some inspiration from that game from Nicholas Murphy on This Game is Broken. When he does this, and he does it much more complicated because I originally had it, he changes every word to banana. So it would literally be Remove one banana cube from your garden. I mean, it would have been banana. It would have been banana. When you take your banana, you take one of your bananas from your available bananas and place them in a... So if I use the same word, I thought it'd be too confusing. I don't think so. No? I think when you're hanging out saying, take a peach and pluck it from the tree and pluck it from the plicker and pluck it the plucky pluck well, the weedy. See, the words like were also action. Like I said, weed was actually the word treat. So it was... The same verbiage, you know, using that mm -hmm. and a noun here. And mm -hmm. I think there's only one time I did not do that the correct way. So I mm -hmm. thought that would help. No, I think the way you did it was a little bit more confusing for me. I think banana would have been a good way. You could have just changed well, it to I pineapple didn't. and it could have been legally distinct. It could have been. <laughs> so pineapple. <laughs> then I wouldn't get sued from Nick Burke. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Uh, 10 out of 25. I got to take it, Angie. You have to take it. Ugh. Quiz time. Now, there's going to be some background noise. I'm going to try to minimize it, but I have, I'm going to be on the computer for this. I have a little bit written down, but I'm going to be on the computer mostly for this. So this quiz, and I don't believe you really do. Do you ever listen to This Game is Broken? Very rarely. Well, it's a loss for you because that's an awesome, awesome podcast. But so I'm not stealing anything from them, but I got the idea from them. And an idea that um, Dave Lusa does with his young son. I have, we're going to do it with five games. Okay. First game. Do I get to sing a song about him? Sure. Okay. Yeah. I need music for that though. Okay. okay. Well, you have a thingy there. Okay. <laughs> uh, listen. Okay. You got to listen here. That's like, that was, that is like my favorite part of that podcast. When I do listen to it is when, yeah, Dave when Dave sings a song. Okay. So it's a tile placement game and it's one that we own. You have to guess what the game is. By asking me questions. You can ask me anything except for the title. So if you want a description of the box, you want to know what components are in there, how long it plays, publisher, um, anything, almost anything, almost anything. You have five. I should have brought a pen up here. I didn't. You can ask me five questions. If you get it right on the first question, you get five points. If you get it right on the second question, you get four points. Third question, three, two questions, like that. Okay. And I should have, oh, hang a second. So I have five games and then I do have one bonus question. So you have a possibility of 16 points. And to make sure that I get max points on this quiz... You've decided to take my message, my suggestion about the first question being easy. So I get my dopamine drip, correct? 
Or are you just going to just, are you going to patchwork me all over the place? <laughs> no, that's fine. Okay, let's just go. I will do better than I did last time. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you your bonus question first. <laughs> all right. What is the name of the tile placement game that Tom Vassell designed? Oh my gosh, you don't know what it is? No, 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 no. I'm just thinking that's a tile placement game. It has tile placement in it. So these games. It was some gangster game. Um, it The name escapes me. Vicious Fishes. Oh, Vicious Fishes. No, there was a different game he designed too, wasn't it? No. No. I think you only did one. I did two. I think he was so demoralized. Oh. Vicious, vicious Fishes got hammered. Okay. First question. What year was the game published? What year was the game published? It was a stupid first question. Why would I you want to redo it? No. Are you sure? No. I'm going to say 2022. It could have been 21, but. What is the theme? The theme. The theme is that. It is a puzzly map building game to conquer the overworld. Overboss. Got it. Okay. So that was your second question. So you get four points. Okay. You're doing good here. You've got four points. Second game mm -hmm. for me to guess. Mm -hmm. What is the theme? Create beautiful windows with colored glass more efficiently than anyone else. Sagrada stained glass of Sintra. Nope. What? It's not. Do I get to keep guessing? Yeah, you have oh, five okay. questions. So that's, I'm thinking maybe I should actually give you my own, what is it about, rather than what's written here. <laughs> it's Azul. It's the second expansion to Exul. And it is called the one that I like that I can't think of the name. Um, Azul Stained Glass or something like that. Right? Azul Stained Glass of Sintra. Oh, I was wrong. I said, I said Sagrada Stained Glass of Sintra. It's actually Azul. You didn't say, you just said, you just said Sagrada. <clears throat> no, if, glass. If I said Sagrada Stained Glass of Sintra. Did you? It was actually as well. So, well, so that was stupid of me. Four points. So you're sitting on eight, third game. All right. I'm going to go with the standard first question. What is the theme of this game, Angie? Balance the food chain. Gods love dinosaurs. You're doing good here, Chris. Five points. Wow. And, you know, I don't think those are actually questions. Well, it's anyway. Four. You can start her out. All right. I'm going to shake this up a little bit. And I'm going to ask you, what is the theme of the game? <laughs> You're creating a home. Dinosaur Island. Wrong. Am I allowed to keep guessing without asking a question? Or do I have to ask a question? I am creating a home. Um, okay. What is, other than tile laying, what is a, another mechanic of the game? Automatic resource growth, grid coverage, modular board. Some of these things aren't mechanics or mechanisms, but um, race, rondelle. Okay, hold on. Yes. So Chris does have a list of all the tile placement games we own. Because I had to take, uh, I try to make this easy so we could make our list of uh, five tile placement games. So I had to break down our list of games by which ones have tile placement in it. 
you can ask another question. So you asked two questions already. So you ask a third question. Is it nature themed? Yes. Yes. Two questions. New York Zoo? You got it. Two points for Chris on that one. Two points. All right. All right. Is this the last one? This is the last one. So far, do you want to know what you have so far? So far, you have... So far, you have 14 points. Ooh, out of 19, huh? Possible 19, you said? 16. 16? Yeah. All right. Ooh, the pressure's on. Okay. This game that I'm going to be guessing, Angie, who designed it? Uwe Rosenberg. I so hope it is not patchwork. Is it patchwork? <laughs> no. Oh, no. God. Oh, it's that would have been like patchwork. a kick to the teeth for me. It's not patchwork. He designed that though, right? He did. <laughs> he did a lot of tile placement games. So on that list, he's got quite a few. What is the theme of this game? It's abstract, essentially. Was it Nova Luna? Yes, it's Nova Luna. You got three. You got three. So you did. Ooh, what did I do? What did I do? That can't be right. That can't be right because that's more points than you said I could have got. No. If I could get a max of five points per every question. That would have been 16. Five points. Per five, oh, I five had times five. five. So Twenty-five would have been the most. Yes, dear. I think if originally I was thinking doing this with three games, so twenty-five. I'm sorry, twenty-five was the max points. Well, five times three isn't even sixteen. But then the bonus one. You didn't get the bonus question. Oh, okay. You didn't get the bonus question. So you got nineteen points. Nineteen. Eighteen. Eighteen. 18 out of 25, Angie. That is a better showing than I had during the last <laughs> quiz. So I'll take it. That was actually a really good quiz. Thank you. Well, you thank Dave, Matthew, Paula, and the Murph brothers. And now it's my turn. Ready? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you make an ecosystem flourish? Just enough of every life form in the chain to supply you with the dinosaurs to dominate the lands? Resources are scarce. Everyone must eat to survive, so moves must be cunning. The hangs in the belts. In gods of dinosaurs, a cheeky wild and timeless take on scientific... <laughs> well, okay, hold on. I got to stop this music. I just accidentally stopped you when you were talking. Okay, I know, but when he does it, yes, yeah, he, yeah. he, but that's exactly that's the way he does it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That was pretty good, though. That was very good. Wow. Wasn't that just an absolute blast? I mean, that's just a tiny glimpse into the treasure trove of quizzes that Angie and Chris treat you all to. If this was your introduction to the world of Meeple quizzes, trust me, you're in for many more delights. Before we wrap things up, just another quick reminder. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and show us some love by supporting us through our Etsy store or by simply clicking that support the show button. Every gesture, big or small, means the world to us thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of our chasing meeples family and don't worry chris and angie will be back in the driver's seat in no time and now for the moment i've personally been waiting for keep chasing those meeples honey guess what i gotta say it yes the keep chasing line yeah that's awesome, isn't it? I'll tell you all about it when I get home.